All right, this is problem number nine from homework set number seven. If I read it out, it says, the figure to the right shows two one kilogram blocks connected by a rope. The second rope hangs beneath the lower block. Both ropes have a mass of 250 grams. The entire assembly is accelerated upward at three meters per second squared by the force F. A, what is F? And B, what is the tension at the top of rope one? C, what is the tension at the top, uh, at the bottom end of rope one, what is the tension of the top end of rope two? So we basically want to figure out the force is up here and then a lot of the, the tensions in between. And the way to go about this is to look at every individual object, A, rope one, B, and rope two, and look at all the forces that are acting on them. So I'm going to draw a diagram now. Draw it over here. So we have a, the rope, B, and the other rope. The other rope isn't connected to anything, but it does have some mass, 250 grams. So it's going to factor into things. And I'm going to draw these little dots. I'm just going to represent where the forces are acting on these ropes. So for this first block, we have the force F that acts upward. We have the tension coming from this rope that acts downward. Tension. And I'm going to call this tension. Um, let's see, we're going to have like three or four tensions on here. So I'm going to call it tension one. Yeah, tension one's good. And then we also have an additional force that I originally forgot to count for. And then I got the wrong numbers. Uh, this is going to be the weight of that block. And so there's three forces that are acting on it. And so force, tension one, and I'm gonna call it weight one, just for it to be, for everything acting on this one object. And actually what I'm gonna do instead is T12. Yeah, I'll do that, T12. And then this guy, the rope, I'm gonna draw it over here, is going to experience that same tension going up, T12. But going down, they might experience a different tension. T, and it's going to be between two, object two and object three. So I'm going to say this is object one, object two, object three, object four. So it's going to be up between object two and three. So tension two and three. And it also has a weight, which is going to come from the mass of that rope. And so weight, let me see, weight two. So all these three forces are gonna be acting on the rope. And then similarly over here, we're gonna have tension two, three that acts. Tension three and four coming from this rope and the weight of object three. And then for the last object, I'm gonna draw it over here on the side to not clutter this image. We're gonna have tension three, four, and then the weight. So what's going on? Okay, so these all belong to block A, and these forces all belong to the rope. These forces belong to block B, and these forces belong to the rope hanging at the end. The important thing is that the, the tensions, the forces here, T34, T34, these are connected, these are the same number. So while you're looking at an individual object, that the individual, like maybe at rope one, the, the force going down and the force going up, these are not necessarily the same because this, the way, how much it pulls on B and how much it pulls on A might be different. What we do know, though, is that for every single object, they're going to have to experience, they're going to have to add up to a force that gives us an acceleration of 3 meters per second. So that's going to be the key to this problem. And we can go ahead and write uh, F equals MA, sum of forces equals MA, for every single one of these objects. So if I do it for the first object, for object, for block A, it's gonna look like this. 
So we're going to take up to be positive. I'm going to write all the forces. So we're going to write force F minus T12 minus weight 1. Um, yeah, I'm going to write weight 1. We know that weight 1 is equal to the mass of object A times G. The mass of object A is 1 kilogram, so it's going to be 1 times G. And we can write the same thing for the other ones. Weight 2 is going to be, it's 250 grams, so it's 0 0.25 times G. Weight 3 is going to be another 1G. Weight 4 is going to be 0.25G. So here we're just multiplying the mass times gravitational acceleration to get the individual weights. So those we can calculate that each of the tensions we don't know yet, but we can still write out equations that are going to relate everything together. Okay, so force is equal to this, this, this. Um, these are all the forces, and that's equal to the mass of this object. And I might do something like write mass 1. I'm going to write it in variables, and then we're going to solve it, because something nice happens when we have all the variables. Um, let me see. Yeah, variables. Okay. So that's equal to mass 1 times the acceleration upward, which we know is going to be 3. But I'm still going to write it as A. Okay. So in this equation right here, if I rewrite that, replacing the W1, and I write it with variables, it's going to be the mass 1 times G equal to M1. A. So that's coming from a sum of forces on the first object. If I do the sum of forces on the second object, I'm going to get something very similar. So I'll write out T12, that one's going up, minus T23 minus weight 2 is equal to M2A. Same acceleration for everything, but different masses. And then if I plug in what I know for the weight 2, T12 minus T23 minus M. 2g equals m to a these are for object 2 and we write it for object 3 t 2 3 minus t 3 4 minus weight 3 third mass times acceleration and then replacing this t 2 3 minus t 3 4 minus mass 3 times g equals mass 3 times acceleration. All of this looks like a lot of a lot of noise, a lot of things that we don't know, but this final one is going to allow us to actually, like if we were plugging in the numbers, this is where we're going to start the calculation because this one only has the two forces acting on it, T3, 4 going up, positive, and the weight going down, we 4. And T34 minus M4G equals M M4A. So <clears throat> here's where we can actually start to calculate things because from this one, we know what M4 is, we know what A is, we know what G is, we can figure out T34, and that's going to give us an ability to calculate going up, going up, going up, all the way to figure out what F is. And along the way, we'll figure out what the individual tensions are between these, which will give us the answers to the other parts of the problem. So, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to rearrange this equation to find T34. I'm going to add this term to both sides of the equation. So I have M4A plus M4G, so we get the T34 equals mass 4, a plus G and that is going to go back into here so if I rewrite this one um, what I'll do is oh yes yeah, so I'll write T to 3 minus and I'm gonna write this M4 a plus G minus M 3 G equals m3a 
and while I'm at it, so oh, oh, I'm gonna calculate, or I'm gonna isolate T23. So I'm gonna add both of these over to that side. Equals M3A plus M3G plus M4 A plus G. Something nice is gonna happen here. I can factor out the M3. And then this term is the same on both of them, so I can factor that out also. A plus G. And so you see that and on this bottom part, what's happening is that these two masses are acting as one. They're just adding together. And so the tension to three, which is the tension between this object that this object experiences, a rope, and this object is experiencing, it's seeing everything underneath as just one mass. And that gonna make sense. Then this is gonna go into two, and I'm gonna skip a little, a few steps. But t one to two, I guess preemptively I'm gonna move the this term over to the right hand side. I'm gonna just say this is gonna be going into here. But I'm gonna preemptively move this to the other side. So t one two, uh, actually I'll move both of them to the other side is equal to m to a plus m to g and then I'm replacing t23 with this plus m3 plus m4 a plus g and once again we're gonna have m2's or factoring out not canceling plus this again and once again, the A plus G factors out. And then the last one, F, similar thing is gonna happen where you have, force is gonna be equal to M1. I'm gonna skip another step. So it's gonna be, so I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna factor out the M1. It's going to be m1 a plus g plus and then the t12 gets moved over to their side m2 plus m3 plus m4 a plus g so f is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 a plus g and all we got to do is plug in some numbers so we see that the entire thing acts as if it's just one big object of mass m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 which in this case it's 1 plus 1 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 all these added together so it's going to be 2.5 so all of this is 2.5 kilograms and a plus g a, a is 3 so we add 3 plus 9.81 that's about 12.81 that's our acceleration and if I multiply that by the mass I get 32.025 32 newtons and that matches what we're expecting 32 over here now going back let's say we wanted to find part b what is the tension at the end of rope one at the end of at the top end of rope one it's important top end of rope one here's rope one the top end is experiencing a tension one two so tension one two is this so we're going to add m2 plus m3 plus m4 m2 plus m3 plus m4 so one less 1 1.5 times the 12.81 see 19 that matches a 19 and you can get the other parts in the same way the nice thing the reason so you kind of see why I wanted to do this with symbols because there's so many of these things that factor out and when you get to the end like this you're seeing that everything is moving uh, because everything is, is moving together that's why you this comes out like this where all the masses add, add up together if you were only asked the first question, what is F? 
then you wouldn't really have to go through all of this if you already knew that everything's moving together so you can treat it as one object just add up all the masses together and then do f equals ma with that awesome anyway thank you and wash your hands